our guest Minnesota legend today is Mr. Ollie Lyle on upright bass. Come on out, Ollie. Thank you for doing this. I'm going to let him play a couple with the band once again, and uh, I'll go find a tissue, and I'm all good, you know? <laughs> and I'll come back, and we'll do a little talking as well. But this, is, this, this whole thing touches my heart like you can't believe. We're preserving the history of jazz. We are doing that right now in the state of Minnesota. Thank you.
I lost track back there. Hey, will you talk to me just a little bit here? I'm going to bring you this microphone, and uh, we can just catch everybody up to speed just a little bit. And uh, okay, so much for having this cleaned up. I'm going to move some of this stuff. Um, there you go. Hi, Ollie Hi. Lyle, everybody. How are you doing? Nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So good to have you here. We got to know each other a little bit, and it's not only, uh, uh, well, your name came to me by a few people, some of our former Minnesota jazz legends. Uh, Ahmed Abdul Karim, as a matter of fact, was the one who had recommended you and okay. saying that you have lots of stories to tell. But okay. So let's get down to it. Grew up in a musical family. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, we had a lot of influence uh, in the family with uh, mom being the, um, the uh, church organist and uh, piano uh, teacher. She, she gave each one of us a chance to sit down at the piano. Some of us took it up, some didn't, you know. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, that wasn't we, your thing, huh? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and we had uh, uh, the school bands. Uh, we we had uh, uh, a lot of different uh, uh, different instruments. I tried a few instruments. I started out on the sax. Uh, and it was nice to to do it. Uh, but then I went to the trumpet. And you had a reason why you wanted to go to trumpet. Right? The reason why I went to well, trumpet was... Well, yeah, you told me because you like we, Miles Davis. We, we had, uh, in, in uh, our house, we had Chet Baker and uh, Miles Davis albums. And that, that, was, uh, that was kind of a big, do uh, it. big, big influence. Yeah, so um, uh, then I, uh, uh, later on, I got drafted uh, into the service. And uh, we were out on, um, on bivouac, uh, bivouac courses where you go out in the field and... Uh, okay. Uh, they want you to rough it and know what it's like to, to rough it out in the field. Coming back to the to the to the base, I heard we we heard the the post band playing up uh, on the hill, and I just said kind of uh, rhetorically, hmm, "Wonder how you get in that." And uh, and well, you know, it was uh, at a time when uh, President Johnson had had kind of upped the numbers for going to Vietnam. And I, I say, oh boy, this this could be it for me going to Vietnam. So, so anyway, when I when I said, how do you get in that? We, I, I finished basic training, Kay. and then uh, uh, I got orders. Uh, this uh, sergeant that I was marching next to was up in personnel, and uh, he saw my record. You know, school band this, uh, you know, school band that, and they invited me back to uh, go to band school. Uh, at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, and uh, it was um, it was. On what what instrument at this point? Uh, in, in the in the. In that band, you, what were you still playing a horn? In the band, I was playing I was playing a trumpet. Trumpet still, okay. Right, and uh, I played uh, trumpet by the way in uh, some R and B groups uh, while while I was here. Uh, in, a, in the that, Twin Cities. Yeah, yeah, that, that was. But how? Uh, so how? What introduced you to the upright bass, which you play so beautifully? Yeah, uh, well, I uh, went to, to uh, the after after band school. I went to uh, Fort Monroe, Virginia. That was the United States Continental Army, Army uh, Command Band, and uh, the nice uh, blue uniforms with the white gloves and that that Ooh, whole that nice. whole that whole outfit. You'd uh, made it then. But, right? I, but I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, <laughs> right. if, if you if you if you have to be in the service. Uh, during a war, I mean that—that's—that's that's the best best way to it's be. The way to go. I mean, so 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 uh, we we had our morning uh, uh, formations in the uh, 
rehearsal hall on the post, and they had a lot of basses up there, and I, I started uh, plunking around on the bass and, uh, and liking it more and more as, as I did it. And um, one, one day, uh, somebody from upstairs uh, in the offices came down and said, who's playing that bass? And they said, Lyle. So he went back upstairs, and uh, a couple days later, we were getting our uh, assignments of uh, things to do, and they needed uh, a, a combo over at the um, Fort uh, uh, Langley Air Force Base. That was right across from us. Uh, There's a general who was getting another star, I think. So, <laughs> so they were, so they were, they needed a combo for that. They, they, uh, the guy came down and he started naming the group as a quintet, and. Um, they named my name, and I, I almost fainted, you know, I mean, uh, but apparently... Because? Well, because I just was so surprised <laughs> to, wow. okay. to, to get it. So I went over and did it. The, the, the gig turned out to be okay. So that was All really, right. my, that was really my, my first gig on so bass. That is so yeah. cool. Then you came, let's fast forward just a little bit. We've talked about this, and it'll be part of the radio documentary on Jazz 88 in June, where we'll edit down these pieces and the live music and all of the great interviews. But when you got back to the Twin Cities, we're just going to move forward a little bit. You were still playing bass, right? Yes. And uh, you weren't very old, about 25, and what happened? You started playing some pretty amazing places, right? I started playing uh, about a... About a week after I got out of service, I got a gig. Uh, it was at uh, the Valley Pizza in Dinkytown. <laughs> and, Woo! Uh, they, <laughs> they had, they had uh, uh, music downstairs from the restaurant. And uh, hey, you know, it was a start. So, you know. That's uh, right. Went with it. And, uh, <clears throat> well, played, played a few gigs after that until uh, I, I got a gig uh, at the top of the Hilton. Uh, with, uh, Who remembers the top of the Hilton yeah, in St. Paul? Top of the Hilton, where, where they have the, the, the carousel. Right. And, and, and who did you work with? That was uh, Billy Wallace. Billy okay. Wallace, a wonderful, wonderful piano player. Yep. And uh, it's a quintet up there. Uh, can't quite remember. Bo Bailey on trombone. Okay. Uh, a lot of, lot of good players. So that, that was uh, a very fun gig. Uh, after that, um, I um, was introduced to the... Uh, the, the leader of the Point Supper Club. Uh, the Point Supper Club, okay. The group uh, that was Percy Hughes. Percy Hughes uh, said, "Okay, come on, let's let's uh, let's let's work together." So we worked. Uh, really, it was a fine uh, fine restaurant. They had uh, reputation for fine dining and right and uh, good supper club like what yeah. where we're at and, right and, now, and, right? And good music, right? So, okay. So. Um, Everything was great about the gig except coming and going to the gig. Now you have quite a story to right. tell about this. Would you touch I on it for a moment? I started uh, getting stopped by the police out there. It was racial profi profiling, uh, targeting, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, it was um, a, a it, it was terrible, and it, it was getting worse. And so I had to do something about it. So I went to uh, the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, to see what could be done about it. And they said, yeah, we, we're familiar with this, this problem out here. So um, they, um, uh, there was, uh, unbeknownst to me, there was a, a, a judge out in Plymouth who uh, used to be a trial lawyer. And uh, he uh, wanted to get back uh, off, the, off the bench and, and get back on the floor and do uh, cases because that's what he was comfortable doing. So he went to the ACLU and uh, said, are there any pending cases here? They gave him my case. And? And uh, we got the case in court. Okay. And uh, it was uh, a two-week trial for this uh, situation. Uh, the jury deliberated for three and a half days, and they came out wow. uh, against uh, violation of civil rights. This, this case, by the way, was... Uh, uh, in federal court, and it was under the uh, 1964 Civil, Civil Rights uh, Act. So that was like six years uh, after. So, And with the kindest soul, he took that into his hands and wanted to make a change, and the powers that be went with what you were trying to do is raise awareness, is what right. I was understanding from your story. Right, right. right? So... So it uh, it uh, was really um, a, a 
that situation at the time because I was, I was going to the U. I was trying to go to school, but I, I wanted to stick with this and, and, and right. see it through. People were telling me, hey, you better watch out. You know, they're going to they're gonna right. get you, you know. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to see the case through. Right. And uh, family members were worried. And, uh, but anyway, it came, out, it came out fine. There were too many people watching for something bad ah. to happen. You know? So... So, so you yeah. uh, got uh, as years went on, though. I know that I'm really fast forwarding. You got a formal apology. Not only did your case get heard and you won, basically, but years, you're d- not too long ago, you got a rap at the door when you were finishing the novel, a jazz novel that you have for sale. But um, and and the the mayor of Golden Valley did a very nice thing. What yeah, did he do? I, we we I was finished off the book at home. And uh, there was a, a knock at the door. And, uh, I mean, a real loud knock, bam, 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 you know. Okay. And uh, I opened it up, and uh, the fellow at the door, the suit and tie, was. Uh, he introduced himself as the mayor of Golden Valley, and he said he came to apologize for 50 years ago, you know. And uh, It's amazing. Something I never thought would happen, you know. But, oh, wow. uh but uh, he he did, and uh, it was um, it, it was just um, and and why I wrote the book. I wrote the book um, to first of all uh, as a fifty year uh, anniversary for a successful civil rights case, and um, then also to uh, uh, kind of a commemorate the hundredth birthday of my lawyer uh, Bill Merlin, and uh, he would have turned a hundred. So uh, he would have turned a hundred last year, I think it was. Okay. And, um, and then, then I wanted to just, I just wanted to do a little sketch of what racial profiling is like. I mean, uh, people of color know what, what racial profiling is like. But uh, so I, I put, uh, I did this little sketch and did the book uh, that I call A Valley Too Far. That's the main title. And uh, the subtitle is uh, A Jazz Novel. And what I was trying to do was weave uh, the civil rights case into the jazz scene. And that's that's what a lot of people uh, tell me that they they like about the books. So. I started the book. It's it's so well written. You'll have to get it. Did you bring some with you tonight? Uh, no, I don't, I don't. no, I got mine from Amazon. So right. write that down. Right. A Valley so. Too Far, a jazz novel. So, right. so. yeah. So anyway, I know you've played in groups and configurations around the Twin Cities. You're still gigging. You had a gig on Monday with Jimmy Ten Bensel and Dale Alexander and a bunch of other guys. You still loving playing oh, music? I, oh yeah, you know, and, and this area just has so many wonderful players. It's just uh, the great, great players that uh, this area has. It's just about uh, right now, just about like these musicians will tell you, it's about venues. We're, we want we want more venues. You That's know. exactly but right. But I'll tell you what, uh, the best venue I think in town is right where we're standing here, Crooners. All right, uh, That's Kroonix. for sure. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Mary. <laughs> Ollie, will you do another song? Sure, yes. Okay, great. I'll take that from you. Ollie Lyle, everybody.
Ollie Lyle. Ollie, come here. You have to have your Minnesota jazz legends, Ollie Lyle, on behalf of Jazz 88. Thank you for being a part of this. I'm so honored. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you.